Okay, let's make a start. Welcome, everybody. Thank you for coming along. I hope you are all enjoying your, uh, your Geekos. Uh, let me just uh, remind you at the end of the presentation, please feel free to come forward and uh, get a copy of uh, SUSE Linux Enterprise. There's uh, plenty of copies there to take away, so uh, take some, share them with your friends, use them as coasters. I mean, uh, so uh, my name is Peter Lees. I'm the uh, principal technology, uh, technologist for uh, SUSE in Asia Pacific. And uh, we're going to be talking to you today about SUSE technologies with a particular focus on uh, our direction for cloud. So I'd like to introduce our managing director for SUSE in, Asia, in uh, East Asia, uh, Andy Zhang. And uh, he'll be starting us off today. Thank you, Peter. Good afternoon, everybody. I think you are all excited as I am, very impressed by, by this event. With this, all this uh, momentum, so I'm wondering if you were wondering the same question as I do, you know, what if I can take all these great works in open source for the cloud and bring it to, into my environment, fully support it and under my control? That's why we are here. That's what we do for a living. And uh, so I will give you a quick introduction of SUSE and uh, then Peter will walk you through our technology and direction. Our partner from ZTE will give you a briefing about their roadmap to, uh, to the cloud, okay? So I don't know how many of you here understand what does SUSE stands for. It's actually software on system that E is not engineering, it's development. So from day one, we are committed to bring open source to the enterprise. And we have over 20 years of experience. And we are the leader in that field. And uh, we are committed to do a couple of th the following couple of things. We are committed to do mission critical, high performance, high availability, and high quality. So we bring German engineering to software. Okay. So uh, in China, we actu actually have a very large staff. Worldwide, we have about eight, uh, close to 800 people. In China, we have about uh, close to 100 people. And for the last seven years, we have been rated by IDC as the enterprise Linux leader. That's why in the audience you see a lot of uh, Chinese friends. So before this started, uh, uh, Peter was teasing me, say, if the audience is all Chinese, you might as well just switch to Mandarin. You know? <laughs> Guess it's, I cannot do that, you know. So what do we do, okay? Uh, how do we do that? We actually bring uh, that through community engagement. Uh, OpenSUSE is actually a leading edge Linux distribution for free. I'm saying that leading edge Linux is because in OpenSUSE, for instance, uh, you can see the, our support to uh, ARM, okay? And we periodically, about, in average, about one and a half year to two year, have a major release. And in, major, in, in the interim of every major release, we have about three to four SPs, spatial packs. So currently, we're at version 11, SP3. And for our enterprise customers, we can actually support a 10 years uh, version. So for instance, we have a, a special support to Huawei for 10 years because they are actually setting uh, their applications to telco carriers and they don't want, the carriers do not want to have a lot of upgrade year over year, okay? And we do it through uh, code and uh, fun, uh, foundation uh, contributions by not only uh, contribute code and technology, also legal and uh, finance, uh, finance contributions. And on top of that, we provide uh, world-class uh, support qualities. We are actually rated uh, as a number one enterprise Linux supporter. So we don't really do that alone, okay? We do it with uh, a lot of uh, top tier hardware and software vendors. And we have solid and meaningful relationship with the hardware vendors, for instance, on this uh, list. And uh, with IBM, for instance, uh, we go way back to the last century. In 1999, we distributed the first uh, enterprise Linux through IBM. Today, we still have a remarkable relationship with IBM. In fact, that over 80% of uh, the Linux Z, uh, Linux Z is using uh, SUSE SLES. 
okay? And we do similar things with HP and Cisco. With Dell, actually, we have a corporate on Clover, which will make uh, SUSE cloud deployment as easy as a breeze. And here in China, we have over 10 years of uh, relationship with uh, ZTE and about seven years relationship, uh, cooperation with uh, Huawei. Uh, in fact, that Huawei probably uh, sell through uh, over 10,000 uh, SUSE server every year to their telco industry. Um, in fact, in, uh, with uh, Intel, I know that they don't really say it publicly. Uh, in, inside of in, Intel, about 30 to 40, uh, 30 to 40 uh, thousand uh, servers, all based on SLES. So they do their works on SUSE Linux. Okay, Fujitsu they build their uh, applica SAP applications on us. So talk about SAP. Uh, SAP is actually one of our strongest software uh, partner. Okay, um, SAP will develop most of their software on SUSE Linux first, and then part to the rest. And some of the products actually will only be available on uh, SUSE SLES. For instance, they are a flagship in-memory database, HANA. HANA. Yeah, only ship on us. <coughs> so talking about uh, uh, virtualization, VMware also has a long relationship with us. Uh, vCenter actually uh, run on SLES, or SLES is in vCenter. And uh, uh, they also take SLES as uh, a computer node in VMware. So um, for Microsoft, it's sort of an unlikely you know, partner. Actually, we have a working agreement with Microsoft. Uh, we are only uh, recommended enterprise Linux by uh, Windows Azure and uh, uh, Hyper-V. Okay. Uh, we also work with some upcoming uh, software vendors like uh, WSO2, uh, which can use their enterprise level uh, middleware to build a pass on top of uh, SUSE Cloud. So what does this tell you? This tell you that the world is a heterogeneous environment. You need to be uh, rely on somebody can do full interoperability, interoperability. Okay, so that's us. So uh, why uh, SUSE pick uh, OpenStack? Actually, it's driven by our customer requirements. So a lot of our existing customer approach us say, hey, we want the same level of your support on OpenStack. And then we look at the OpenStack for the last few years. Through this event, you can see, without any doubt, is one of the, or if it's not the, the most successful uh, open source project. Okay, I'm not gonna go through all the statistical numbers, you know. So also, more than important, uh, I mean, very important to us is that the best philosophy of OpenStack matches ours. That is uh, open transparency and collaboration. So how do we do? How do we? Why you know? How do we support uh, uh, open stock? Uh, how do we support uh, open stack? Okay, we actually are the platinum member from day one, and uh, Alan Clark, uh, who also sits on the board of uh, Linux Foundation, uh, through his many years of uh, work setting up a lot of open uh, community projects was well respected. So by recognizing his uh, work, uh, his colleagues voted him as the chairman of uh, OpenStack. Okay, and uh, how do we, what do we do to uh, contribute to the OpenStack Foundation? We actually, by doing following couple of things, we hardening and providing security uh, to the uh, technology and also we, uh, uh, upgrade OpenStack to support multiple hypervisor, okay? So, um, so we actually have, uh, 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 we actually uh, bring uh, OpenStack to you as we are proud to be the, you know, uh, in, in the uh, enterprise level uh, supporter as, you know, for the last 20 years. So now I'm handing it over to uh, Peter. So I haven't uh, been using uh, English to do a uh, presentation for, for, for a long time. You know? So, uh, That's a great job, Adam. It's certainly a hell of a lot better than my Mandarin, which I now will start with. Ni hao. 
Bonjour, Peter. And the rest of the presentation will be in English. Although, before I go on to that, I have a, a great story from, from yesterday. We were meeting with a partner from China. And uh, as you know, the, the, the word chairman is very important in, in China. Uh, everyone knows Chairman Mao. Yeah? Uh, so this partner was very excited to meet Alan Clark, Chairman Alan. So I'm going to get a T-shirt made, Chairman Alan, because every time we said it to him, he got more and more embarrassed. So make sure if you see Alan Clark, say, hello, Chairman Alan. He'll know it was me. So I'd like to talk to you about our products. Uh, that is, how we are taking the, the open source uh, projects that, uh, that Andy uh, mentioned and making them available as enterprise products. How we are turning the, the open source community uh, innovations into something that you can actually use in the enterprise with full support. But first of all, I'd like to talk about why we're doing this. And if you think about cloud operations, it's actually, at the end of the day, it's really about automation, right? It's all about automation. And as any systems administrator knows, as soon as you start to try to automate things, it can very, very quickly become very, very complicated. You know, to make the, the system look easy and smooth on top, uh, there's a lot of running around underneath. It's the classic swan technique. You know, the swan glides across the water, but you don't see all the, the feet going underneath. So in a very simple kind of model of a, a cloud infrastructure where you're, you have architects developing templates and resources available that can then be supplied to a business customer, you can see even in a very simple model, it becomes very, very complicated. And so what we try to do is produce some of the tools that you need to make it less complicated, or at least simplify some of the aspects so that you can concentrate on the bits which are you know, specific to your business. And if we narrow this down, what we want to do is package, deploy, maintain and measure, and then uh, decommission systems. This is the standard life cycle that you want to follow when you are doing uh, application deployment to the cloud. OK? Is this a fair summary? Basic things you want to do? So for packaging, we have a tool called SUSE Studio. Now, this is an excellent uh, application uh, which is available online for free uh, and also as an on-site version that lets you bring all of your, uh, your key resources that you need to support an application. So the packages you need in a Linux distribution that you would use to, to support your application, you bring them together, choose which ones you want. We do some uh, dependency checking. We do some uh, uh, conflict checking, make sure that all the packages are working together the correct way. You can then apply uh, custom information, like you can apply, apply your branding, uh, some pictures. You can apply custom configuration information. And then you can run it up inside of the studio environment uh, and check that it's all working properly. And once you have that recipe built, you can then deploy that recipe to multiple different hypervisors. So this is where we, we support hybrid environments. If you, for example, have an uh, OpenStack environment internally as your private cloud, you can deploy to KVM or to Zen or to VMware or Hyper-V. But then if you need to burst out, say, to Amazon, you can use exactly the same recipe and automatically uh, send that image out to an Amazon uh, cloud, your EC2 instance, uh, to get that burst capacity for your hybrid environment. So it's a very, very flexible tool for building uh, standardized uh, packages, standardized application and OS packages using uh, approved repositories. So you, as a, as a solution architect or as a systems designer, you can choose exactly the packages which are approved within your enterprise and then make those available to the, the developers, the testers, the QA people, whoever they are, to then deploy uh, on a case-by-case -case basis as needed. We also integrate this, this tool into our cloud and management tools. This helps both uh, for patching. If you have a long-term application, you need to do package maintenance, patch management, and so on. And we have a tool I will discuss a bit uh, later, which is built into this. So here's like a little diagram of the deployment options. Basically, from our SUSE Studio package, you can send to Amazon, send to Windows, Azure, send to your private cloud. You can even send it to mainframe. 
And believe it or not, the mainframe is coming back, just like flares. But they, didn't, they said flares wouldn't come back, but uh, main, we are actually seeing quite a few uh, uh, mainframe deployments these days, especially where people are trying to save licensing costs. So it's actually very easy to use this one, uh, one instance and send it out. And uh, I don't have time here to demonstrate it, but if you would like to come to our booth later on, I can take you through uh, Soup to Nuts uh, demonstration of how SUSE Studio works. Or you can try it yourself, SUSEstudio.com. It's free. So now we have this image, how do we do that? Well, we deploy using SUSE Cloud. SUSE Cloud is our OpenStack implementation. Uh, so just like we take the Linux kernel, uh, take the, the core components of that, work out the, the pieces, the modules that we want to support, do some QA, do some engineering on that, and then release that as a, uh, an enterprise-supported Linux distribution, we do the same thing with OpenStack. We take the OpenStack source, bring it in, do some engineering, contribute any bugs, any enhancements back into the community, add in some extra components. We add in, uh, for example, Crowbar to help you with a faster bootstrapping, package that together and supply that with enterprise support. The current version of SUSE Cloud is version 2.0. Uh, we released it in, in September and it's based on Grizzly, okay, with uh, Crowbar 1.x uh, enhancements. Some of the key features, everyone keeps asking me, you know, oh, right, so you're doing OpenStack, what makes you different to everybody else who's doing OpenStack? Well, one of the key features is that we support pretty much all of the hypervisors. If you want to do KVM, you can use KVM. If you want to do Zen, you can do Zen. If you want to do VMware, you can do VMware. If you want to do Hyper-V, you can do Hyper-V. We support all four of those hypervisor environment, environments, nobody else with an OpenStack distribution, as far as I know, does that. Everyone else wants, to, wants you to choose one particular hypervisor or maybe two. So for Brownfields environments, for enterprises who, you know, every enterprise has VMware. A lot of enterprises have Hyper-V because it was uh, very cheap to get. And a lot of people are looking to use Linux for uh, lower cost environments. You know, if you've got a web a web uh, server or uh, something simple like that, you don't want to waste a VMware license in order to do that. You know, that's, that's valuable. So run that up in Linux instead. So use your KVM, use your Zen, whichever you like. And we have the, the vendor agreements to back that up. So we work very closely with Microsoft, we work very closely with VMware. In fact, it's interesting to hear that you know, people are talking about uh, working with VMware, which is great, you know, everyone, we're working in a heterogeneous environment. Uh, but if you actually run vCenter, uh, the vCenter appliance, which is their, uh, VMware's new controlling uh, mechanism, it's an appliance based on SUSE Linux. So we have a very long relationship with, with VMware and we can have those back-to-back -back enterprise level agreements to support the entire environment. As with SUSE Studio, we also have the management uh, tool integration with, with SUSE Cloud. So as you create and uh, distribute your control nodes, your Nova nodes, your storage nodes, and so on, these nodes are going to be long-running instances. Okay? The, the, uh, the applications running on them, the VMs, may be short-term, one hour, a couple of days, a week, something like that. But the underlying control nodes are going to be long-term systems. Okay? So you need to be able to package them. You need to be able to uh, apply patches, apply configuration changes uh, from a centralized point. And that's where SUSE Manager comes in. SUSE Manager is the centralized management point. It's a centralized tool for managing SUSE Enterprise Linux. You can also manage Red Hat Enterprise Linux, and you can even manage CentOS, all from a single uh, console. So this is uh, patch management, patch maintenance, uh, some uh, performance management and monitoring, and configuration management as well, all from a centralized point. This lets you manage both physical hardware and also virtualized hardware, and anything that's in the cloud as well. Basically, if you can get an IP connection to it, you can manage it, you can send your patches uh, from this centralized repository. We handle any kind of hardware that, that can run SUSE, uh, SUSE Linux or Red Hat Linux, so you can support from the same console, uh, x86, x64, IBM Power, uh, IA64 if you're still running that for some reason, and even mainframe, again, all from the same node. Uh, and because we have a, a, 
a distributed uh, proxy environment for it, it's also possible to scale this to, to hundreds or even thousands of nodes. So it is absolutely feasible for a, a cloud deployment. And as I mentioned before, just with a couple of clicks of a, of a tick box, you can integrate SUSE Manager with SUSE Studio and also with, with SUSE Cloud. So the idea here is that we have a complete toolkit. We were talking before at lunch about how, in some cases, uh, there's an expression in English, uh, if all you have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. We offer you a toolbox rather than a hammer. Right? So if you want a particular hypervisor, you can choose that hypervisor. And we have the whole sp um, work workflow covered here from the basic platform to your packaging of your applications, the de deployment of your applications, and the maintenance of those long-term running systems. So what's next? This is the part that everyone wants to hear. What, what's your futures? What are you coming up with? Well, obviously, our next step is to introduce the Havana features. Um, our schedule for that is around about the beginning of next year. So the target, in general terms, will be to introduce features from OpenStack within 90 days of the release of, of each uh, new version. Okay, that's, that's the general target. The general approach for engineering that we, that we use for SUSE Linux is what we, we want to uh, apply to, uh, to OpenStack as well, which is this. We rely on having a stable platform. Our customers rely on having a stable platform. So we want to stabilize the environment as much as possible. What this means is we will have a release for Havana, but that doesn't necessarily mean that our next release will come out uh, with Icehouse at the same um, uh, the, the same kind of schedule. Instead, what we might do, and I'm not the product manager, so I can't tell exactly what's going to happen, but the, the general approach is if there are features that, that we can backport that are necessary, then we will look at doing that first to maintain the stability so that you don't have to do a uh, what could be a very difficult uh, major release migration. Where that's not possible and, and we need to do a, a major migration, then we will look at doing the, uh, the full you know, 4.0, 5.0, whatever it is at the time. So our general approach will be for stability for enterprise environments uh, so that you can rely on this platform to build your, your infrastructure. The next thing that we'll be doing a lot more of is continuing integration of these tools. So SUSE Studio, SUSE Manager, uh, uh, SLES itself, that's SUSE Linux Enterprise Server, and uh, SUSE Cloud will all become uh, more integrated. Cloud is our big direction going forward, okay? So we will expect to see in SUSE Linux 12, which is, is uh, scheduled for next year, a lot more of these cloud features integrated as a standard part of the operating system rather than a, uh, an additional uh, installation. And, and just in general, cloud as a, an operating concept uh, is going to be more and more what we look at when we're building our management tools. The third area where we, we are going to work leads on from what I was talking about before, stability, robustness. So we're looking where we can to introduce high availability, especially for those control nodes, administration nodes, and so on. That's the next area of, of research and where we'll be uh, leveraging our high availability product um, based on Pacemaker uh, to, uh, to work into the cloud environment. How we do that, I don't know. Uh, uh, Tim Sarong, if anyone knows Tim Sarong, uh, he's one of our leading HA uh, engineers. He's here at the, at the conference. You've seen him. He's got a beard that comes down to here. So that's who Tim is. Go up and ask him. He's working on, on HA and uh, OpenStack uh, development at the same time. And then the, third, the fourth part is to build the partnerships. So having the tools, having the, the software is great. But when you want to run this in an enterprise environment, you really need to have uh, a surety that all of the software components are going to work together. The software, the hardware, is all going to work in a way that's not going to end up with finger pointing when you ask for support. So we'll be building those partnerships to help uh, provide those uh, platform as a service tools, building the partnerships to make sure that the hardware that's, that's coming up will be uh, fully supported in terms of the virtualization and, and other features. Um, and generally doing all of that sort of back-end stuff that makes the enterprise support a lot easier. So thanks very much for that. I'm going to uh, hand over now to our friends from ZTE who will tell us how they've been working with OpenStack and with SUSE. So thank you.
Thank you, Peter. And uh, first, please, please allow me to say thanks to Susie again for your, can, uh, for your kindly invitations, and uh, we do appreciate about your attentions as well. Uh, so today, I'm going to share about the latest directions uh, about cloud computing and, and OpenStack. Uh, so everyone may, uh, may ask when they heard that he, they were asked, is that one who made telecom equipment and handset? Yes, we do. And we are delivering, uh, delivered uh, telecom equipment and solutions to our customers in many years, including the wireless network, fixed network, uh, value-added services, and uh, terminals. But today, we're going to say that we are also committed to development of cloud computing. They have already uh, put more than 7,000 R&D staff in cloud computing area. Our footprint covering about the standard research and the hardware and software de development and the system integration and also the, uh, the, 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 the partnership with, uh, uh, the, the cooperation with the, with the partners. Uh, our vision is to, uh, to, to combine the IT services and CT services to build a terminal and pipe and cloud ecosystem. Uh, so it's vision and goal and strategies. Our vision, uh, they hold a trademark uh, which names CoCloud. Uh, in 2005, and it means uh, we will support the colorful services through our cloud computing platforms. And the goal is rank top, globe top four uh, in cloud IDC infrastructure and solution provider. And the strategies, the first, support OpenStack, that's why we are here, and support the uh, soft, software defined network and NFE. And also, we'll keep focusing on the development of cloud computing data center, visualizations, uh, cloud OS, the, vi uh, the visual desktop, and other uh, applications. Uh, today, everyone is talking about the OpenStack. And, and we know it is, uh, it is hot uh, with, the, with the highest community activities. And, and, and we see that uh, it becomes the, the, the most potential the most potential cloud OS standard and architectures. So we joined OpenStack Foundation as a cooperative sponsor. And we will keep support, continually support OpenStack in the future also. And Susie, uh, as, as, as Annie just said, we have a more than 10 years relationship uh, in, in, in Linux OS. And we are seeking the new opportunities to cooperate in the future. Uh, uh, in cloud computing. And we do believe SUSE will be the one of the key partners of the T cloud computing. Uh, uh, I'm not a, the, the, the R&D guy, so I just uh, make some brief introduction about our, uh, our uh, cloud OS based on OpenStack. We released the first version in September uh, of our cloud OS based on OpenStack and running on Grizzly. And we can see that we have, uh, we have uh, the fully compliant with OpenStack architectures, and we, have the, uh, we, we support the hybrid uh, with, uh, hypervisors, and also we have fully support about the APIs, OpenStack API, uh, Amazon API, and also the, the uh, DT APIs. Uh, so now we can see that uh, we are on board about OpenStack. Uh, for the last, uh, DT has uh, delivered our uh, telecom service to more than 500 uh, operators, more than 200 uh, enterprise customers in the world. We have more, more than 100 branch in the, in, the, in the world, and we can deliver all ICT solutions to every corner of the world. And now we are ready for cloud computing and OpenStack. And that's all. Thank you. Thank you to Susie again. Thank you, Peter. Thank you. This is it. So thank you very much. Let's, uh, let's wrap up then. It's pretty simple. 
So Scissor is proud to be involved in OpenStack as a the, the latest in its 20-year history of bringing open source projects to the enterprise. And we're really excited to uh, to support uh, the foundation as a platinum member uh, and to support these events. We'll com continue to be supporting these events in the future. Um, and thank you all to you for uh, for coming and, and visiting both here and in, at our stall. Uh, those of you who have a chameleon, you've all contributed to the success of this of this event for, for us. But uh, as I said, we're proud to, b to bring our 20 years worth of open source engineering to this project. Uh, and we're also very proud of the tool set, the complete tool set that we have that is backed by 24 by 7 support. So what this means is that OpenStack is ready for the enterprise. We will support you if this is what you want to do. And if you are a, a, a developer or a vendor that builds on OpenStack, we want to talk to you as well about how we can provide uh, SUSE Cloud as a foundation for the work that you do. So we're, we're really happy to, uh, to work in that, in that kind of way as well as we do with ZTE to work under the covers, let you take the credit and, and we'll just provide the, the foundation for you to work on. And we're already working with all of the people that, that you have in your data center. So we have key alliances with all of these, all of these, uh, these major uh, contributors to the OpenStack uh, uh, foundation. So what I'd like you to do next Visit our stand in the expo if you haven't already. I would love to show you a, a demonstration of SUSE Studio, or even I can show you a, a full workflow from creating the, uh, the OpenStack environment through to creating the, uh, the image, deploying that, and then managing that. We actually have that running. It looks pretty good. Oh, well, I think so anyway. If you don't have time for that, go ahead and, and download it for free. Go to suzacom slash downloads, and you can download all of the software that we've been talking about or you can go to suzastudio.com right now and build your own appliance for deployment on your own network. And finally, stay in touch, follow us. We're on all of the, the open media, uh, the, the social media. We have some really great videos on YouTube, by the way. We put a lot of our demos uh, on, on YouTube, little 15-minute vignettes that will show you how to use things and, and how it's working. And next week, we have SUSACon, so there will be lots and lots more of those coming out of SUSACon. So go check out our YouTube channel. Or you can visit us on uh, scissor.com slash communities and uh, uh, post your own comments and, and get support from our engineers that way as well. So thank you very much. If there are any, any questions, I'm, I'm happy to take them, uh, either here or uh, back at the stand. But uh, that's all we have. So thank you very much for your attendance.